Yo, what is good, my guys? It is your Don Daddy feeling nice and toasty. You know what I'm saying? It might be cold outside, but it's nice and warm in here. I hope you're having a wonderful 2019 so far, man. And we're going to continue with the What of Men Was In series, my hero edition. And we are going to go with the greatest. You have to truly understand the greatness that is this, okay? The greatness that is this man. His magnificent aura. He has an explosive personality. I am talking about the one, the only, Bakugo. So let's just hop into what it would be like if Bakugo mastered in Nin. And I will let you know, he becomes monstrous. So, Bakugo, Bakugo, Bakugo. The violent personality that he has. The personality that is more attuned to something that a villain would have than a hero. And given that we're basing these men abilities off of their personalities, where does he fall under? What, what category would, uh, you know, the average villain fall under? in my hero academia because that is probably where Bakugo would go and to answer that question it's slightly complicated because I think he falls under two groups that are very similar personality wise because they're both very impulsive um, in nature and they seem to be very honest and hot headed because of how they work and that is the enhancer and the emitter classes so I do think that the enhancer and the emitter both work very well with Bakugo I think if you picked him for either one of the two classes that you did a pretty good job. I also think that they would both enhance his abilities tremendously um, depending on which one you picked I think would change slightly how did we enhance his abilities. For me I thought that Bakugo would end up being an enhancer versus an emitter. You might be wondering why I picked that one over the other because the emitters are very volatile which is the first description I think when you go and think about Bakugo. For me, my thing is I think Bakugo is really honest, which is why he's so volatile. He's very honest and after his goal, which is to be the best hero. And to be the best hero to him is not like a symbol of peace, where it is for Deku. Which is why Deku wouldn't be able to use his ability as much as I think he would because he wants to be a symbol of peace. And spoilers if you haven't watched the first episode, go back and watch it. He is a manipulator in my opinion. Where I think Bakugo wants to just be the best hero, which means saving the most people in the most efficient manner. Being the best fighter, being the best of the very best. It's very honest, it's very simple. And to me, that is why I think he's an enhancer. Enhancers are kind of your prototypical shonen protagonist. Very simple minded, very honest, very easy to connect with because we do understand what's going on with them psychologically because they express what they feel. So I do think that he would be an enhancer over an emitter, but again, I think if you pick either one of the two, um, then you, you have a pretty good choice. But you know, the part that I like the most right now, this is, how would that really change Bakugo's fighting style? Would he change any? Would he be pretty much the same? But what would happen? Well, let's, let's go talk about the fighting styles and see. So, fighting styles. Enhancers are boring. I want to throw that out there now. Enhancers by themselves are boring. If you could only master enhancing abilities and you didn't use emitter or transmutation, which are both part of the enhancer ability, uh, well, both are enhancers are efficient in both of those two. There are two 80% efficiencies. Um, then I think it would be really, really boring because it would basically just be enhancing certain aspects of your body, body, whether it's your eyesight, your arm strength, your leg strength, etc. You would just be enhancing those. How do I think Bakugo utilizes this with his fighting style? If you watch Bakugo, um, Bakugo has a good mid-range in close combat 
abilities. Um, you fight, see him versus you fight with Ochako, and he keeps her at a distance, knowing he doesn't want her to get close, not understanding what she's trying to do, but understanding that she has to touch him for her ability to work directly on him. So he keeps her at a distance. Um, but if you see when he fights people like Toroshi and like Deku, that he tries to get in closer to them. When he fights Toroshi, he rushes down on him for his finishing blow. When he fights Deku, they're doing kicks and punches and things of that nature. He's very close combat. So I think he has a very good mid-range to short-range distance. I think Bakugo would enhance his arms, legs, and things of that nature, something very simple like that, to be able to not just hit harder, but mainly so he could release more of his explosions. So, Bakugo's support gear um, makes it so they have still reinforcements in his arm. And those still reinforcements help him be able to, I don't know where that came from, uh, the still reinforcements help him when it comes to the pushback that comes from his explosions. In the fight for Tito Chaco, where he doesn't have any of his support items, and you see him do his nice explosion to get rid of all the debris that she had built up in the sky, you see him holding his wrist and his wrist shaking from the force that came from it. But if he's able to do this with one hand, just enhancing it, not only does that give him the ability to really to much more force in a, a specific direction. It gives him another hand free to do other things. Imagine him being able to get someone close with one hand and hands and then enhance his strength in the other arm in having a close face-to-face -face blast full force. I think that obliterates even the top villains and heroes in My Hero. Maybe other than um, people like Kirish... Oh, I can't remember her name. Kirishima? The hardening quirks for people like All Might. I think that most people, they get hit with that and it's their outfit account. So, again, it's not really changing his fighting style so much as it is enhancing what he already does and improving upon him. He has the emitter class, which is 80% efficiency, which most people just think of as beams. Um, but what it is, again, is being able to expand your aura into a longer distance and still having control over it. And things you can do with Nan is, is amazing. And something that they do um, in Hunter x Hunter, you see, is very important. If you can actually have a basically the intent to kill, the intent to harm. You can use your aura to put that out to a point where people who don't have Nin can actually die just from that aura. Their killing intent with their Nin can actually kill people. And I think that's something Bakugo does. I think Bakugo goes for an intimidation factor with that. Um, as far as his hot suit, what he does with it is I think he uses that to, ex to direct more attacks. He used it to be able to guide his explosions in certain directions. Um, he had this special attack where it's this focal beam where he makes a circle and he makes a beam. But instead of doing that again, he can use his Nin to funnel and direct it and give his uh, explosions actually the ability to turn into different directions, giving him more variety. Maybe actually being able to make like a firestorm with his explosions to, to encapsulate people in one area, trapping their movement. And with transmutation, I originally was just going to make him have fire, use his aura to make it kind of like fire to make his explosions bigger, which I still think he might do. But I also think he might do something more like his Soka in Hanaharm, which is a more sticky substance. Because he is such a mid-range, a short-range person, I think that his combat might be wrapped around keeping people within that range and being able to use his raw natural fighting ability in this range to keep... Um, to damage them, to keep them there where he can hit them with explosions that are in, that are enhanced with his men, with his aura, um, and just obliterating them close up. I think his fighting style gets a lot more aggressive in nature than it is right now, which is already a very aggressive fighting style on its own. I would say he has one of the more aggressive styles in my hero um something i also want to say fun fact honorable mention type thing about bakugo is that i think of nin is in my hero and he's able to learn it his superiority complex goes through the roof i think he becomes one of the cockiest i think he becomes the cockiest character in my hero for his age um i also think that his his development improves when he learns that other very dedicated people like Deku, Karoshi, or just people in other schools who could also master it. Um, I think that when he sees how much 
they've improved or how big the pro heroes are, that he also has that shattered in a much more crucial manner. Um, maybe even possibly changing his perspective more than it already has been doing in My Hero. But again, this is what I think. These are my thoughts on the subject. If you watch Hunter x Hunter and you have some different opinions or different people you think he might be like in Hunter x Hunter or different ways you think it might affect him, please let me know down below. If you have some people that you want me to talk about outside of my hero, let me know the anime, the character, or whatever it may be the case may be and hey just, just chit chat with me just talk follow me on twitter comment down below subscribe that's what subscribe for your boy you know what i'm saying 2019 new year same me real nigga you know what i mean my bad you know what it is though um you know i love you guys i really do stay blessed up i will see you next time why do i keep pointing i don't know